My name is Simon and this is how to build a racing car. In this episode we will construct the stainless steel exhaust system. I made things pretty easy for myself by using an identical tube length to the one on the wrecked car that I bought, as I knew that that car ran pretty well. This meant the design only really involved finding a way to fit the runners in and around the other parts of the car. The reason length is so important in the exhaust is related to its flow. The hot exhaust enters the exhaust tube from the exhaust valve, creating a pressure wave which travels along the tube at the speed of sound. Any obstruction or change in the tube, such as the 4 into 1 collector that I've got, will cause a reflection of lower pressure back towards the exhaust valve. If this reflected wave of lower pressure arrives at the right time, it will effectively assist to remove the exhaust gas from the cylinder, improving the performance of the engine. This effect is strongest at a particular engine speed, so it can be a really useful tool to modify the shape of the engine torque curve. As I mentioned, I used a known exhaust length from the broken car that I bought. I could have determined another length from theory, but in practice a lot of development would have been required on the dyno to verify it. I decided it would be more suitable to use a known starting point. My car therefore has quite long exhaust runners, so would scavenge the exhaust better at lower RPM, since it will take longer for the reverse wave to return. All four runners need to be the same length in order to get the same effect on each cylinder. The front cylinders were quite simple to design the runners for, they had a simple direction reversal before coming together towards the centre to meet the collector. The rear cylinders were less simple, I had to run them straight down after the cylinder to miss the drive shafts then direct them in an S shape to get the required length. By slightly varying the left and right hand sides I was able to achieve the same length on all four runners despite varying cylinder positions. Once I had the design I had to put it into a form which I could use to fabricate the four runners. These gave the lengths between each node where the straights would meet the corners which were not radius in the drawings plus the angle between the straights. To make things easy on myself I used only 90 or 180 degree corners which can be bought off the shelf. These make building pipe work relatively easy as you only need to keep track of a few measurements. As with the chassis, the first step was to cut the tube to length. I found using tape to mark the line helped as it was easy to produce a square edge that was readily visible while cutting. I tried two different techniques for accurately welding the tube. The first was to tape the pieces together and mark four locations around the circumference to allow me to weld. I wasn't so happy with the accuracy of this technique, plus the parts tended to move slightly as I was working. I ended up fabricating subsections of the complete exhaust runners then tacking them together in place on the car. This seemed to be the simplest way of achieving a good result. The four runners could all be fabricated as two separate pieces which would allow me to then skew them to achieve the correct position. While welding, I used an argon purge on the exhaust to try and obtain as good a finish on the inside of the tube as possible around the weld and to protect the stainless steel surface. To do the purge, we used a wire splitter on the bottle with two argon regulators. One was set to low flow and ran through a tube taped to one end of the runner being welded while the other went into the welder as it would normally. The purge flow was constant so I had to work swiftly to not waste too much gas. I had to be very careful as well when welding, if I blew a hole or used excessive filler I would produce a restriction in the exhaust that would wreak havoc with the flow. The flanges were laser cut from a 4mm stainless. To my dismay I found that they flexed too much when the engine was running and I had to cut them off and swap them with 8mm equivalents. After that the flanges were sturdy enough not to deform and leak when the engine was running. I used the pickling gel to treat the surface around the welds. This removes the coloured oxide which forms due to the high temperatures during welding. If this layer is removed, the stainless can corrode in these areas. The pickling gel contains high concentrations of some nasty acids, so I had to be very careful while working with it. Once the parts have been treated, an alkali neutralising solution is used to wash the surfaces and remove the acid. The gloves, brush, plastic sheeting and liquids were then bagged and disposed of. After the four tubes were welded, they were test fitted to make sure that they fit correctly with the collector. I cut the ends off and they were complete. Finally, I used a high temperature insulating exhaust wrap to cover the entire surface of each exhaust runner. The intention behind this was to try and reduce the heat within the car's bodywork that would otherwise be transferred to the engine or gearbox. Whether this stays or not will be decided during testing. The collector received a coat of high temperature black paint to stop it from rusting. It was simply made of carbon steel, so needed some protection. At the moment the car doesn't have a muffler, it's likely I'll need to add one to be able to race at some of the noise restricted racetracks. 
it would simply attach to the end of this collector. That's the stainless steel exhaust done and dusted. The bulk of the work was completed over about two days with smaller jobs such as wrapping the runners done at my leisure as the project moved on. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Feel free to leave a comment and let me know what you think or subscribe to see more of the construction and hopefully soon testing. Anyway, I'll see you on the next one.